Recordings in progress. I had a conversation with Jesse this morning about these recordings. I've been saying for months now that, gosh, I would love to find out where these recordings go because I've done so many classes. I'd like to get them uploaded. Specifically, we've been doing the Mike Ferry 21 point sales system every Wednesday. And I had a conversation with them and he has, he can go back as far as January of last year. So all the classes from 2020 are gone, um, but 2021 he can get. So he's going to start grabbing those and going from there. So one day, not today or tomorrow, but many years from now, <laughs> we'll have these classes uploaded somewhere. All right, good stuff. Okay, so last week we talked about personality styles, and this week we're going to continue on that to kind of wrap up this particular thought. So we have the four basic, just a quick recap, four basic personality styles, analytical, amiable, expressive, driver. Okay. So if I were to say this person is really focused on specific details and facts, what personality style of those four would that be? Analytical. Analytical is correct, yes. If I were to say that this person really cares more about doing stuff together, a team environment, more of a comfort type system, what would that be? Amiable. Amiable, right. Okay, good. And if I were to say this person is more of a, you know, very quick-witted, very energetic kind of life of the party type person, what would that be? Expressive. Expressive. Okay. And what about someone who's just, give me the results. I don't care about the details. How do I get from A to B? Driver. 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 All right. All right. Here we go. All right, so we're getting kind of the gist of this, of these personality styles. So make sure you're trying to identify who these people are. So last week I gave a, an objection handler based on a personality style, which was, uh, we want to think it over. And I gave you amiable analytical driver. And I said, I left the expressive blank. And I said, hey, if anyone wants to do some homework, why don't you write an objection handler based on their personality style for an expressive. And uh, I got one person to do that. So Alexis, thank you. So Alexis, since you were the only person that did that, why don't you let me know what book you would like me to order for you and I'll send you a book. Oh my God, are you serious? I am serious. Oh so God. see, sometimes, you know, when we give suggestions, if people do them, we might throw books your way. <laughs> or other things like that. So there you go. Good job. All right. Good stuff. Very good. So let's, let's dive into a little bit more on these personality styles. Okay. If you missed the class last week, we kind of went over a lot of the basics. And so I'll get that again. This is, goes back to Jesse getting these things uploaded. And so we'll get that to you, but let's, let's dive into a little bit more about these personality styles. So I wrote down here more on the personality styles. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't jump to conclusions when trying to figure out a personality style. It takes me as a coach, sometimes it'll take me three or four coaching calls to figure out your personality style. So it makes it even harder on the sales side of things because you might not have three or four calls with these people to figure out their personality style. So, but you have to listen, but don't jump to conclusions because somebody who could be under stress might not show you who they really are. And let's be honest, is real estate a stressful transaction? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. All right. It's me and two people. All right. So they could be a little bit stressed, which therefore means they might not be showing you their true colors just yet. So don't jump to conclusions right away. You also don't know what somebody's going through at the exact moment they call you or you call them. 
So for example, let's say you call someone and it's like, yeah, yeah, no, that sounds really good. Hey, look, I got to go. I got this thing going on. You might think, oh, they're a driver. They're just quick, quick. You know, they want to get to the end. Well, no, they might be an analytical, but they're really in a situation where they got to go. Okay, so don't jump to conclusions. Ask questions, dig deeper, okay, give yourself some time. This is where the value of don't end the call too quickly, don't go to the presentation too quickly, call back, confirm, pre-qualify, you can learn some of this stuff, okay? The more information you gather, the more accurate you can determine their personality style, okay? calling someone and they say, yeah, I'm interested in selling. And you say, great, can I be there at four? And they say, yes. And then you run out the door. You don't have any nearly enough information to figure out what kind of style they are. Okay. I wrote down here next, their thoughts, their feelings, and their opinions have nothing to do with their personality style. This is a key thing when identifying personality styles. Their thoughts, their feelings, and their opinions have nothing to do with their personality style. Okay. There, so, so therefore, you know, well, there, let's, let's put it in today's environment. Well, their thoughts on these mandates. Well, if they think this way, then they must be this. If they think this way, they must be this. No. Their political stance. Well, if they're this political way, they must be this personality style. If they're this political way, they must be this personality. No, has nothing to do with it. Okay. Their race has nothing to do with it. Let me give you an ex let me give you an example. Okay. And I'm, I'm just I'm being honest here. So I don't want anyone to think I'm I'm being prejudiced in any particular way. But typically, someone who's Chinese, they'll say analytical. It's the very first thing that comes to people mind. Oh, analytical. They're Chinese. Because we're stereotyping people. That has nothing to do with it. Okay. Jack Ma's Chinese. He's amiable, although he's He's following the Melinda Elmer policy of getting less and less amiable by the day. Okay. Alexis, Alexis is Asian. I don't know what kind of Asian Alexis is, but Alexis is expressive. So, so you can't necessarily, she's Korean, so she's expressive. So you can't, but, but we, but we do that, but with different stereotypes. Okay. So their thoughts, their feelings, their opinions on certain things, you know, have nothing to do with their personality. So don't jump to that conclusion. It's all just based on the type of behaviors that they, that they give out. Okay. We talked a little bit, I mentioned this last week. But a hard time identifying people because we think we're unique. Not in a bad way, but give me an example. I might, I, I'll actually, this, this happened to me once before. So I had met an agent, this was a few years back, and I couldn't identify their personality style. And it turns out they were expressive. But the reason I didn't think of them as expressive is because I was like, well, they have energy, but they don't have my kind of energy. That's because I'm like over the top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but, but I couldn't identify, oh, they're not expressive. They don't have my kind of energy. They're not you know, as animated as I am, but they're still energetic. They're still animated just because they weren't as over the top as I am. Doesn't mean they weren't expressive. That happens with a lot of us. You know, you're analytical and they think, well, they can't be analytical. I, I'm far more detailed, far more specific than they are. Well, then it just means you're analytical squared. Okay, but they could still be analytical. So typically that's how it works. All right. So make sure you're observing verbal and nonverbal behaviors because personality styles are not just based on verbal, they're based on nonverbal as well. So who can give me an example of a nonverbal behavior that can be identified in helping figure out their personality style? Use of hands. Use of hands. Is that what you said, Valerie? Yeah. And like that body language? That, that helps you identify what? Well, 
it helps you identify their personality style in the sense that they're expressing with their hands. Sure. Yeah, I understand right. So use of the hands, right? So an expressive is going to be more animated. An analytical is not going to be doing this, right? That's the Italian. Well, that's well. That's, that's, <laughs> I had an Italian person <laughs> tell me a friends. joke. Okay, hold on, hold on. I had an Italian person tell me a joke, so I'm not being. This is not out of the, the realm here. Okay, this is the true. <laughs> this, this Italian guy told me this joke. He said, um, "Boat capsizes. And two Italian guys are in the middle of the ocean. They finally make it to shore." And the Coast Guard comes up and I'm like, how did you make it to shore all the way from the middle of the ocean? And they said, I don't know. We just kept talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. You know, <laughs> all oh right. So there, That's you funny. <laughs> there you go. But yes, use of your hands could, could be leaning more towards an expressive. All right. What else? What's another nonverbal behavior that can help you identify what possibly their personality style is? When they put their hand like this. They put their hands like this. What could that possibly be, Tess? That means that they're somehow analytical, likes to think they don't want to reveal their whatever they're thinking. 100%. Yep. So if they're, if they're more across like this, they're probably more analytical, right? Yeah, 100%. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What else? Give me, give me another example. I'll give you a few more. Somebody else give me another example. How, of how, they, how they dress or present themselves. How they dress, 100%. Mike does this all the time. If you go to a Mike Ferry seminar, he'll talk about personality styles and he'll pick somebody in the audience that's got some vibrant colors on. And they'll go, expressive. Yep. Because you're never going to see you know, a driver with like a neon green shirt with some like, you know, what <laughs> says Cindy, are you, are you debating that? You know, I'm like, like you're not going to see. Nobody's all or one. <laughs> but right. You're right. Nobody's all or one, but typically you won't see a driver in that type of, of, of atmosphere. Right. So yes, usually an expressive might be more vibrant with the, the color, the type of accessories they have things along those lines. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. So, all right. Good job. So I also wrote down here how they sit, right. And Kathy had mentioned how they present themselves. So this goes right on that, how they sit. So they're sitting down. If you can get them seated, seated, an amiable and analytical will sit back in the chair. An expressive and driver will sit up in the chair. So part of identifying the personality style is process of elimination. Okay, they're sitting down. They're back in their chair, amiable or analytical, done. So now I just have to figure out one other clue to figure out what they are. They're sitting up in their chair like this, expressive or driver. Now I just have to figure out one other clue. The easiest clue to figure out is how much they talk. It's the easiest one to figure out so you can identify it. So if they're sitting back in their chair and they're going amiable or analytical, okay, now the next question is, do they talk a lot or do not, they not talk very much? Well, they talk a lot. Well, then it's, then it's an analytical. They're sitting up in their chair. It's expressive or driver. Do they talk a lot? No, then it's a driver. But you can identify based on their person, based on some of their body language, that they can do something along those lines. Okay. <coughs> so someone who seems kind of, as Tess mentioned, like their arms are like this, they kind of seem a little bit maybe disinterested. Chances are it's more analytical. Doesn't mean they're not interested. Okay. But that's just, they're just processing things. They're kind of like this, right? They're, they're not letting you totally in. So those are some things you could do with nonverbal behaviors. Okay. Just kind of helps out a little bit. Another way to find out. Yeah. Alexis, but move quickly or slowly. Yeah. So, so the speed of which they talk, they talk fast, faster. You're either expressive or driver. They talk slower. They're analytical or amiable. Okay. There you go. If they're late, they're expressive. 
Yes. Okay. They're late. They're expressive. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. I am as scheduled as I am being an expressive. If they're late, they are expressive. You don't have to figure out anything else. Done. Are you saying you're always late? No, no, no. I'm never late. I, oh, you yeah. hardly ever. I am very, very scheduled. That's what I thought. It's amazing for an expressive. Okay. But in the most expressive way possible, my schedule is color coordinated, right? Red being coaching calls, green being appointments, orange is company meetings. You know, it's like some people look at my schedule and some of you would freak out. One, because yeah. of how much stuff is on there. And two, because so you of have two personalities. Analytical oh, oh, and oh Tess, I got way more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're about five. <laughs> <laughs> I got way, I got way more than two. <laughs> yes but but that's that's yes that is true because but robert like sometimes it's tricky when they have developed versatility or business maturity like you've developed business maturity to be on time Correct. and to be scheduled yeah but like people think i'm a driver all the time well you're getting there but i'm not a driver you're getting there though you're no, but that's business you are less maturity. and less amiable by the day <laughs> Yeah. By the day. <laughs> but I'm still but I'm still deep down that's what I am You're still deep down like my but yes. to your to your point Melinda it, it does make it harder this is the hard part of the sales aspect of things is because you don't have a lot of time with them to figure it out as a coach you have the advantage of I can do three or four coaching calls to help figure it out you don't get that luxury so to Melinda's point they could be someone who's also very versatile has a lot of business maturity and you're and so they can work different ways you have to do the best you can and the best way best way you can do that is ask a lot of questions and pay attention to every little detail so let me give you an example of paying attention to every little detail okay that make could make all the difference in the world you ask someone to describe their house and they say three bed two bath around 1500 square feet <laughs> Now, some of you might just hear that. Okay, so it's a three-bedroom house, two bathrooms, 1,500. You might just hear that. What I heard was three-bed, two-bath, around 1,500 square feet. That's an expressive all day long because an expressive is just trying to get to the end, and they'll abbreviate it. Three-bed, two-bath, around 1,500 square feet. So you have to listen to every little detail. An analytical is going to say three bedrooms, two bathrooms, 1,494 square feet. So that little detail of three bed, two bath versus three bedrooms, two bathrooms went from expressive to analytical, totally, change your, totally changes your um, presentation. So you have to look for every little detail. This, is, this comes with practice, okay? Do they ask a lot of questions? If they ask a lot of questions, they're amiable or analytical. If they don't ask a lot of questions, they're expressive or drivers. Now. You have to don't jump to the extreme. It's not unheard of for an expressive a question. Well, he asked me a question, clearly not an expressive. It's not unheard of, but an analytical is going to ask a lot of questions. Okay. What about this? What about that? Why this? Why that? Okay. That's a lot. An expressive might just go, well, well, why do you think it's this much? And then you can reason, they go, okay, great. So they got the question in, but then they just accepted it and moved on. So don't jump to the extreme that an expressive can't ask a question. Don't jump to the extreme that an amiable might give a little bit of a longer answer. It's like, oh, they just, they give a little bit of a longer answer. It's possible. That's why you have to don't jump to conclusions. You have to process as much information as possible. So. Let's go to a couple, um, I, I'm going to give a couple other examples of handling objections based on personality style. Before I go forward, questions on anything we've gone over so far? Okay, got it. Okay, so the prequel, you have a listing, you want to try to identify their personality style. One of the ways you can do that is with the pre-qualifying script. Now, what is a common question 
that helps you identify their personality style on the prequel script. Describe your home for me. Describe your home. Okay. So describe your home for me is a great question to figure out their personality style. Let's give you an example. Will you please describe your home for me? Yeah, it's, you know, it's three bedrooms, it's two bathrooms, move in ready. What would that be? Driver. Driver, yeah. It's to the point. It's this, right? Well, it's, you know, it's three beds, it's two baths, got a huge backyard, like a 6,500 square foot lot, you know, around 1,500 square foot house. What would that be? Expressive. Expressive. What is one of the words I use that gave me the clue that it was an expressive? Around. De Denise has it. She said, because I said a huge backyard. Yep. Or around. I said huge. An expressive is going to use words like huge, amazing, gigantic, like these great verbs, right? Oh, it's got a huge backyard. And, and analytical is never going to use the word a huge backyard. Okay. They're not, and amiable's not going to use it. Driver's not going to use it. So with an expressive, you, this is where the little stuff comes in. Huge backyard, amazing, fantastic, gigantic, unbelievable, right? These, those types of words, you hear them use those kinds of words, you're already thinking, oh, that's probably an expressive, okay? Well, it's, you know, it's three bedrooms, it's two bathrooms, it's 1,462 square feet. And um, it's 6,250 square foot lot. What would that be? Analytical. Analytical, right. Very specific. Okay. Now let's be honest. How many of you know the exact square footage of your home? Right. Only a couple of you. Most people are going to go, it's 1350 and some change somewhere in there an analytical now it's funny that some of you raise your hands weren't analytical it's versatility good okay because tess and melinda raised their hands and neither one of them are analytical okay but an analytical knows the square footage knows the lot size is very specific very detailed okay please describe your home for me oh well this you know gosh we bought this home when we first got married um, and it's three bedrooms, two bathrooms. The kids, you know, grew up in this and now they're, they're moved out. So we're ready to downsize into something smaller. What would that be? Amiable. Amiable, right? It's all about the, the excitement of the house, my family, my kids, right? Hey, Describing Robert. in the home. Oh, sorry. Do you think H also has to do with changes in personality and your, 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 your kind of, you know, personality type that you have to? Uh, possibly. I had this discussion about one of my dogs earlier today that when my dog was younger, it was uh, an amiable and it's got angrier as it's gotten older. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I guess, I, yeah, honestly, sure. I, there's a possibility that, you know, I, people can change as they get older. Sure. Yeah, because I, I don't think I'm, I'm analytical like everybody said to me. I'm more amiable, but I think I've gotten real estate. I think I've become more like that, though. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, certainly possible. Thought. Yeah. I think I'm amiable too, but Robert says no. you are. You're not. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You gotta watch Every, it. Everyone, maybe on after work for Cindy, is shaking their head no. <laughs> Cindy, you are so a driver. Then it's fifty-fifty. <laughs> You're nice, but you're no, still no, a driver. No, you ask everyone who I ever talk to. Don't I always throw in little tidbits and stuff? Isn't that amiable? Okay. Cindy, so, Cindy, you you have you certainly do some really nice things. You have some amiable qualities, but thank at you. your that's core, all I wanted to hear. You are primarily a driver. Fine. How I about this? I don't know why you I hate that so much. Quality. Okay. If if we all go to the bar, sit down, have a few drinks, and about <laughs> half an hour later, I think the true personality will come out. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> some wine and some spirits. <laughs> I think what it is. No, I truly I don't know why, but. I believe that Cindy is amiable, but because of what I met her when she first started, she was totally amiable. Like she will do everything for everybody and get it's your fault. So it's out. your fault. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not you, Tess, you all. The collective you. Yeah. 
Cindy, I've seen you in an arbitration session, Jared Driver. Yes. Okay. Well, when I have to be, obviously, right? That's true. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'm all, I feel vindicated. He admitted that sometimes I made me a vote and I'm good. I'm glad I could, <laughs> glad I could help you out today. That's my only goal. All right. Good. Okay, so do you understand how asking the question when you describe your home for me can help you figure out the personality style? Okay, now, in my opinion, there's a second question on the pre-qualifying script that can help you identify the personality style. Does anyone know what that question is? Yes, I do. Which, what is it? Uh, are you planning to interview more than one agent for the job of selling your home? That's it. We hate asking it. We hate asking it. I don't know why. We hate asking it, but if you want a second question, kind of a sneaky way to figure out their personality style, will you, are you planning to interview another agent for the job of selling your home? No. What is that? What, what, is, what is that? One word driver. answer. Driver. 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 Right? Okay. Driver. Are you planning to interview another agent for the job of selling your home? Yeah, we're going to interview two other agents. We always interview three people before making any big decision. Analytical. Analytical. Analy yeah, analytical, more specific, right? Are you planning to interview more than one agent for the job selling your home? Well, you know, my spouse knows somebody, so we might consider interviewing them. We're not sure yet. Amiable. Amiable, because they don't want to admit that they're interviewing. They don't want the confrontation. So it's, it's one it, we might, and two, if at all possible, they'll blame it on somebody else because they don't want to be the ones that are confronting you that, yes, we're interviewing somebody else, okay? Are you planning to interview any other agents for job or center health? Oh, Robert, come on. I'm not interviewing anybody. You're my guy. You're my buddy. Let's go. Come over here. Let's get the price figured out. Let's sign the contract. Expressive. Expressive. You asked a yes or no question that went to 45 words. Simple. So that question, are you planning to interview another agent for the job center your home, is a sneaky question in there that can help you identify their personality style. Okay. And the more you gather, the better you are prepared. So now the question comes up then, well, Robert, what if there's two people? There's two people going on the listing presentation. I've only talked to one. What do I do? Well, here's what you do. You base your presentation on the personality style of the person you spoke to. And then if you need now here, this is this is advanced in the middle of the presentation. If you notice that the person you're directing to is not really the decision maker, you have to shift, go to the other person and see if you can figure out a little bit of their style. OK, this is tricky, right? It's a little more advanced, but start with the personality style of the person that you've been speaking to the whole time. All right. You think opposite? Usually the other spouse the opposite? Sometimes. You said before? Sometimes, sometimes not, but everyone's <laughs> definition of opposite could be different too. Now, me and my spouse would be the opposite. I'm an expressive. She's an analytical. But there's probably a, a lot of people that are expressive and expressives. You know what I mean? I mean... Opposites can't always attract when there's a 50% divorce rate. So clearly there's an expressive marrying an expressive somewhere. <laughs> they just don't know they can't get along yet. All right. So, so you have to start with the person you've been speaking to and then shift based on that. Okay. Do your best to figure out who's going to be the ultimate decision maker. Now, if all else fails, who do you need to cater to the most? If all else fails, who do you need to cater to the most? Wife. The wife. wife. If it's a man the and dog. a woman. If it's a man, yeah, and the dog. If it's a man and a woman, the wife. Okay. Now, if it's two women, that makes it harder. <laughs> okay. If it's two men, that makes it harder as well. Okay. That's just the, the roll of the dice sometimes. But if you have a man and a woman, Typically, you want to lean more towards the wife. Now, I understand there's certain cultures that are more male dominant than others. I can't get into the specifics of that because I only know my culture. Wouldn't 
wouldn't it be more of the person that is emotional? Like say, for example, if you have two guys, because usually there's one more feminine than and sure. masculine. And yes. So it just be the personality of which one you feel has more of the say so. Yep, hundred percent. And you could typically figure that out in any in any situation. Denise is one hundred percent right. If you have if you have two men or two women or whatever the case may be, you can tend to fi- find out who's the more emotional one, who's the one that's more the the going to be the one that the decision is based on, and then you kind of cater to that person. So let me give you an example. Right, eye contact. You're presenting, there's typically always going to be one person that looks at the other person for approval. Almost every time. So you're presenting, right? And you have two people sitting here and you're going over the comps and you're going, does that make sense? They're typically one person will look at the other person for approval. That person is the decision maker, the one that they're, that's getting looked at. Very rarely do they look at each other at the same time and go, oh yeah, that makes sense to both of us. There's one person that's typically looking at the other for approval. So once you see that, shift to the person that's being looked at and say, that's my target, that's my ace. What's their personality style? Let me try to cater a little bit to them. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through this. So we got a couple minutes here. Questions on anything we went over before I go to one more example of a objection based on a personality style. Robert, could you share a little bit about like, you know, they say, okay, this is your type, but you're different under stress. Yeah. So what that means is that everyone has a core personality style. Okay. Under stress, you might reserve to a backup. So meaning that in my comfort zone, I might be this. I'm an expressive, but if you put me in a stressful situation, am I still expressive or do I kind of put a shelter on and say, oh, well now I'm in an uncomfortable spot. I'm in stressful. I'm going to act this way. So let me give you an example. I'm an expressive, but sometimes in a decision-making process, I can turn into an analytical because I love numbers. So you might not think that as an expressive, but I, I will, I mean, you see me sometimes talk about info sparks and talk about all these other things. I do geek out on numbers a little bit. So that can happen with anyone. That's, this is why you have to ask more questions because the initial reaction you get to somebody in a real estate transaction, because it's stressful, their initial style might not be who they really are. You know, you might, you might ask me, for example, I might say, well, yeah, I'm interested to know the price of my home. If it's a certain price, I might be willing to sell it. And you might be thinking, oh, he's a numbers guy. He's analytical. But that was just because that's what was on my mind. But then you start asking me questions. Well, tell me a little bit more about this. Where would you go? If you, if you could get your price, where would you go? What would you do? How soon do you want to do it? Like you start asking me more questions. All of a sudden I'm in the middle of a conversation. I can't help myself, but to start being expressive. So it's the same way with anyone else. They might say, you know, well, yeah, if I could get my price, I'm willing to sell it, but it's got, I'm not going a penny below this. You're like, oh, they're a numbers person. They must be analytical. You start asking questions and pretty soon they start telling you about how wonderful this house is and how they, you know, all the things they did to it and all this other stuff. And it's like, oh, wow, they couldn't help themselves. They all of a sudden became the, who they really are, which is amiable. So this is why you don't jump to conclusions because in a stressful situation, they might be giving you a little bit of a different personality style. But if you ask enough questions, they can't help themselves. They will start being who they really are. So do we try to match them first being like under stress personality? No, and just ask questions. Oh, we don't try just to ask questions because if you try to match them, you might lose them. So I'll give you an example. Uh, and the best thing I could do is give myself as an example in a, in a back in a stressful situation, I might lean on analytics. I might go to numbers, but if you then go, Oh, well, let me, st-, he, he meant he's kind of numbers. So let me start with that. And you start giving me too much numbers, too much analytical as an expressive, I, I'm, I'm turned off at some point. 
I'm done. Because you didn't ask enough questions to figure out my real personality style. You went straight into analytics and I can only take so much analytics. So you, you really have to, they give you their initial thing, keep asking questions. And then you might, they, they might be, that might be who they really are, or you might uncover it. But if you just keep asking questions to dig a little bit more, then you'll figure it out. Then it starts to come together and it's like, all right, now let me press it there. But you can't, can't jump to conclusions. Not until you ask enough questions, have enough conversation. That's the beauty of the scripts that we follow is that the questions can be used with any personality style. Where are you moving to? How soon do you have to be there? How much do you want to list your home for? What price won't you go below? How long have you lived at this address? Like these are questions you can ask any personality style and then just listen to their response and go from there. But yeah, very important that you don't jump to conclusions otherwise you could lose them. Or imagine being a driver. Imagine a driver who is, you know, um, under stress all of a sudden becomes very talkative, like an expressive. You know, and then so you go, oh, they must be expressive. And then you start talking a lot and giving all these other high energy. And then the driver's like, oh, I'm, no, next. I just turned back into my driver self. Moved on. It's a great question to be very careful of that. All right, good stuff. Okay, so one o'clock, I want to wrap up with this. Okay. An objection based on a personality style. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to this one here. Okay, so what if we did, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna read this out to you and you'll kind of see, figure out a little bit. So let's say it's price. They give you the objection based on why is your price lower than the other agent, right? Is price sometimes an objection? Yes. Okay, great. I'm just talking to myself now. All right. So let me, let me read you. Let me read you objections based on personality style for why is your price lower than the other agents? Okay, so driver, great question. What price did the other agent suggest? 750, you suggested 725. Okay, did the other agent provide comps to support their price? No, but they said their home was better so they could get more. Is there anything in the comps that you disagree with? No. Can I be direct? Well, yeah. I don't disagree with the comps. You don't disagree with the comps. And this other agent did not provide any other comps. Is it possible they're suggesting a higher price just to get the listing? Well, what do you mean? Well, since we all agree on the comps, it's the market that has decided to list at this price, hasn't it? So really the only chance for you to get more money is to hire the right agent, not by overpricing and praying. Hmm. Do you think I can sell your home for the most money possible in the shortest amount of time? Yes, great. So. A driver, I'm just being very direct to the point. I ask a couple questions. I'm not going to ask a lot of questions. I go with an analytical. A couple questions to get them on my side and then go, can I be direct? And as a driver, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I want you to be direct. What do you got? Okay. And then I don't beat around the bush because I'm not trying to be amiable. I'm not trying to be nice. I don't disagree. You don't disagree. They didn't provide anything else. They just want to get your listing so they're providing a higher price. Questions on how I did that, or does that make sense to everybody? Yes. That was, that was good. Yes. All right. I'll give you one more, right? So I'll give you an amiable who says, why is your price lower than the other agents? You're going to notice a lot of these have the same type of mentality. That's a great question. Let's go over that together. That's a great question. Let's go over that together. Right away, I've already got them on the hook. That's a great question. Let's go over that together. Right. It's all, I've already got him. Already got a lot, lot, got him locked in. What price did the other agent suggest? 750, you suggested 725. Okay. Did the other agent provide comps to support their price? No, but they said they could get me more money. 
Can I tell you why that strategy concerns me? Difference. Same opening kind of, but with the driver, I said, let's be, can I, can I be direct? Yes. Amiable. Can I tell you why that strategy concerns me? Because remember, an amiable is looking for verification. They're looking for support. So I come back with, can I tell you why that strategy concerns me? They're, all of a sudden, their comfort, their, their verification is like shattered. Like, oh my gosh, why? Why does that concern you? Look, I agree that you don't, I agree that you do have a great home. But if we list at 750, my fear is that we won't get anybody to come see how great of a home this is. And it would be a shame if a family passed over your home and simply didn't see how great it would be for them as they continue to grow simply because it was priced higher than other homes in the market. Wouldn't you agree? I swear to God, if you ever say that line to an amiable, you'll get 95% of your listings. Can I tell you why that tragedy concerns me? Yes. yes. I agree that you, that you do have a great home. But if we list at 750, my fear is that we won't get anybody to come see how great of a home this is. And it would be a shame if a family passed over your home and didn't see how great it would be for them as they continue to grow simply because it was priced higher than the other homes in the market. Wouldn't you agree? Well, yeah. Don't you want to get as many wonderful people to see your great home as possible? Yeah, I would too. Now I could close there or I could, you know, keep going if I really want to. I could say I would too. Here's the other truth. If your home is worth $750, we'll get $750. The starting price does not have to be the ending price. The more people that see your home, the more offers we'll get. And do you know what that will do to the price? It'll go up. Exactly. So let's do the right thing. Let's list it. To, let's list it at seven twenty-five to open up the market and get what you want the time that you want. Does that make sense to everybody? Amazing. I'm telling yes, you. Yes, that sounds great. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you say that to an amiable, it's over. It's a wrap. These need to be recorded. We we're right. It is recorded. And yeah, they're recorded. I just don't I mean, know where the recordings go. <laughs> I know they're recorded, but they don't put them up. I don't actually, know where the recordings go. Actually, I was about there. to say having uh, examples of these, like uh, an actual like uh, examples, would be nice, so we can practice these and go over and over again. I don't know. Oh, that would so, be nice. so, so would you like me to share this with you? Is that what you're saying? I would love to, yes. Robert. <laughs> I would love to a lot. Okay, yeah, can you share it? I, I promise oh, I'll, I'll write one. I, I'll write I was one. just waiting for somebody to ask. Yeah, we can only write as fast as we can. All right, all right. Tell you what, I'm going to share with you the two that I did, which were, which were amiable and driver. And then if you would like to, I would challenge you to come up with an expressive and analytical one Abigail, and then send it to me and, and send it to me. Okay. Now keep in mind, some of you don't do this for ego purposes. Why do I say ego purposes? Some of you won't do this because you think that, well, I don't know how to do it. So I don't want to look stupid. Just try it. It's better to look stupid in front of me than in front of a client. That's true. Yeah. It sure is. All right. I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the link in the chat box for those two scripts that I just did. Robert, I have to say last time it was expressive. You know, I think you should do it for expressive. It was hard for me. It was you want hard. me to do one for an expressive? Yes. All right. Fine. I'm All right. Why is your price lower than the other? Why is your price lower than the other agent? Great question. What price did the other agent suggest? 750. You suggested 75. <laughs> Okay, did the other agent provide comps to support their price? No, but they could get me more. Let me ask you something. Have you ever been to an auction or at least familiar with how an auction works? So driver, I said, can I be direct? Amy Little Bill, I said, can I tell you why that strategy concerns me? Expressive, I said, let me ask you something. Have you ever been to an auction or at least familiar with how an auction works? Yeah. Do they start high and have people bid lower or start lower and have people bid higher? Well, they start lower. Yeah, they do that because they want to get more people involved to create competition, right? Right. You would be the same way at an auction. You would want to be involved. You would want to be in the game, right? 
well, yeah. I see I'm playing towards the expressive. They want to be involved. They want to be engaged. You would be the same way at an auction. You'd be involved. You want to be in the game, right? Well, yeah, of course I do. Let's take the same concept with your home. Do you want me to report back saying we have to, to negotiate lower or even worse, we have nothing to negotiate at all? Or do you want me to report back saying we have multiple offers to choose from so we can get you a counter with a better price? Multiple offers. I agree. I would take that strategy on my own home. Let's list it at 725, get you multiple offers, multiple showings, multiple offers, get it sold and get you moved to a bigger place. Let's do this. So all I did was just give them an example and then it was just energy, enthusiasm. Let's do this. Let's get you multiple showings, multiple offers, get it sold, get you to the bigger place. Make sense? So what you're saying yes, Robert, I, is that on a, uh, what do you call this? Uh, on somebody who wants to be like involved, expressive always like to be involved. Right. Yeah, they want to be involved. They want to be in the game. Okay. So if you're working with an expressive buyer, for example, I don't know, I don't think about writing an offer. You want to get a house? Yeah, then let's get in the game. We're going to write up an offer. Let's get in the game. All right, let's do it. Right? You don't have to talk numbers. You don't have to talk strategy. They want to be in the game. They want to be involved. They want the action. That's why expressives gamble. Analyticals don't. I guarantee at the production retreat right now, there's no analyticals at the craps tables. Well, I'm playing the odds here and I have $50 here. My odds of winning. And, and that I'm truly not, means I'm not, I'm not analytical. Right? You know, an expressive that truly is, like, is I'm not analytical. That's an expressive is let it ride. <laughs> I'm definitely expressive. You'll see <laughs> yeah, you know, all the time. <laughs> How much money do you have? A hundred. How much do you want to gamble? 150. That doesn't make sense, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay they want to be involved they want to be in the game they want to be where the action is all right good stuff is this helpful yes heck yeah right. yes thank you